Say cheese. Hey everyone, I'm Tim Holtz, creative director for Ranger. Now, if you are like me and you love vintage photos, um, how about changing a simple black and white photo, whether it is going to be uh, a vintage photo or even a current one, and tinting it to look something like this. That's right. Ranger's got cool tools to help you do just that. We've got some craft nibs. Now, these nibs are really great. They're a little flexible nib and the nib holder, and this is really going to help you control all of those colors. And what we're going to do that with, of course, is a little distress ink. So let me show you a great tutorial on how to tint your photos. Now, the cool thing about these are the fact that these are, of course, interchangeable. They're also washable. In other words, you can wipe them off onto a damp cloth and let them dry. And it is a flexible nib. So think of it as like basically the tip of a marker. Um, so it has that flexible kind of felt nib to it. And the nib holder makes it very, very convenient to use these nibs. Now, the nibs are actually sold in a package of 10, but if you get the nib holder, you will actually get two nibs with the holder, which is really nice. Very simple, all you have to do is take the flat end of the nib and just slide it right into the nib holder. It just kind of has a friction fit, so it's easy to just pop those out and change them. Especially if I'm working with multiple colors, I'll just pull those out and change them. And you can simply push that right into the holder. Makes it really nice, especially when we're going to color. So I'm going to share with you uh, some of the things you can do with the nibs. Now the nibs could be used for a lot of things. You can use them to uh, do a lot of detail application, whether it's going to be with chalks or paints or things like that. I like to use them, of course, with distress ink. And one of the things I love to use the nibs for with distress is tinting photographs. Now when you tint photos with distress ink, it's really important that you test the photo paper that you want to tint because not all photo papers are of course inkable. Uh, those that have a, a gloss or a laminate over the front of them are really uh, kind of ink repellent. You can use an inkjet, which is what this is, so you can actually print an inkjet and tint it without worrying about any of this smearing. Or you can also do laser or toner copies of that. And this, as you see, is a gloss photo paper, but this is kind of a cheap photo paper. And quite honestly, the cheaper the photo paper, the better it works when it comes to tinting. So here's how it's going to work. I'm just going to go with my nib. I'll choose a color, and I'm going to use fired brick. And basically when I tint, I like to just pick certain areas that I want to actually highlight. I don't want to recreate a color photograph. I just want to tint some of the areas. So I'm just going to take that nib and simply swipe it right across that distress pad. And I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. I'll show you, but it just picks up a little bit of that ink color just right on the tip of it. You don't need much of it. Then I'm going to go right onto my surface, whether it's a photo or anything like that. Apply that color direct, and when I need more color, I'm just simply going to swipe it right back over the top. So one thing you have to keep in mind when it comes to working with these nibs is that it is not a marker. It's simply just a tool that will allow you to pick up color, whether it be ink or chalk or anything, and transfer it from surface to surface. So that's really what I'm doing, just kind of going in there and just kind of working with that. You kind of hear it going across that paper, make a little squeaky sound. It's pretty nice. Now I have tried working with the Distress Markers for tinting photos. Um, I haven't been very successful with them. A lot of times most of the gloss photo papers will actually beat up with the markers. But you certainly can use them on photographs. You just have to find, of course, the right photo paper to work with. But I love these nibs because the craft nibs really give me total control. You can see that I'm going back to my pad quite frequently. And I like that because I don't have to worry about oversaturating my paper, especially when I'm doing something like this when it comes to uh, photo tinting or anything like that. I really have quite a bit more control as to where my color is going. So right now I've got my color on there. I'll just pick this up just so you can see. I've gone in and just highlighted the bow and the dress so far with some color. And if you want to make a little the color a little more intense, you could go back and just fill in some of the areas, but I'm not going to worry about that. Now I'm going to change my nib, so I'm just going to pull that out and I'm going to insert another one because I'm going to change colors. I'm going to just go down and add a little bit of color to this bear. So I'm going to go in with some vintage photo for this one. And just color a little bit. Oh, that squeaky sound. And that, of course, is because I'm going over gloss. And I'm just adding some of the areas. Now, if you have any of the black areas of your photo, of course, there's no point in tinting those because, well, they're still going to be black. So. I'm just tinting any of the lighter areas of that photo. All right. So at this point, I have gone in using my nibs, and I've colored the bow, the dress, and of course, given the bear some color. So now I'm going to create an overall vintage look. And for that, I'm going to work with antique linen distress ink. And it's really important that you work with antique linen. 
any of the other colors are going to be really, really dark once they touch photo paper because photo paper is actually emulsion based. And what that means is that it really absorbs any of the color in our ink that goes over the surface. I'm working with a piece of cut and dry foam. If you have an ink blending tool, you can use that as well. But as you can see, my application for the ink is a little different. I'm not really going and doing kind of the blending motion because sometimes, again, depending on your photo paper, if you do that blending motion, you'll actually begin to smear some of the ink that you tinted your photo with because it tends to re-wet that emulsion. So I'm just kind of doing a little pouncing. And I'm just doing this all over, going all over the photo. And antique linen is light enough that I'm not really worrying about harsh ink lines, which is super, super nice on this. You may see the camera kind of bouncing a little bit. It's just because I'm doing that kind of repeated tapping motion right over the photo. And I like my photos, of course, because I am creating kind of a, an aged antique photo. I like them to be a little imperfect. I don't want everything to be blended exact because, again, this is a vintage photo. I'm going for something um, really kind of hand-tinted and antiqued. So I'm going to go over everything there. All right. So once that's done, I'm going to go and I will go to a darker color this time. This time I'm going to use a little bit of vintage photo. And I'll kind of go just a little bit around the edge with that darker brown. Just kind of swipe that. Just because I want the edges of the photo to be a little darker. You could go in with any of your favorite distress colors. It could be a, a darker tone like walnut or maybe brushed corduroy or frayed burlap. But I think vintage photo really works for this one. Just going around the edges to create kind of that shadow. And another thing that I love to do when I'm working with photos, of course, is stamping on them. So I'm going to go in with black soot distress. And I'm just going to take a rubber stamp. This one happens to have a nice little definition on it. I'm going to ink this up. And I'm just going to go and I'm going to stamp right over the photo. Awesome. Because Distress Ink, of course, is formulated for photographs. And that's why I choose to stamp with this versus something like Archival Ink. Of course, you could stamp with Archival. But like I said, Distress is formulated for photographs. So it really uh, works well with the emulsion paper. And there we have it our tinted photo. And the cool thing is the inks on there, they're dry. That's right. They're already dry on there, so it's not going to smear around. So just to kind of give you a comparison, there's the before and there is the after of our tinted photo working with cut and dry foam and of course the craft nib, the nib holder, and distress.